Um, so we're going to move on to our debate. Um, are you going to split it up a little bit? I'll tell you how we'll do it. Okay, I'm going to let Dr. Freeman uh, explain how the plan is, but there's going to be a debate discussing hemi versus total thyroidectomy. Okay, I, I've actually uh, discussed this as Quan. Dr. Quan Du will uh, take the uh, approach of doing subtotal thyroidectomies. I'm going to do total thyroidectomies. Um, we're going to have a few minutes each for presentation. I'll do the first one, Quan will do the next one, then we'll have some back and forth, and um, maybe we'll have a vote, I guess, after. But I, I want to um, express my appreciation to uh, Ashok Shaha for appointing me to the staff of uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, because I was one of the guys in that picture. But anyway, so, so I'm going to talk about hemi versus total, and much of this was in a talk that I gave yesterday. Um, this is the 44th anniversary of uh, a fight called the Thrilla in Manila. And this was Joe Frazier versus uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, AKA Cassius Clay. This was one of the greatest fights in boxing history. So what we're having today is the Thrilla in Roma. And uh, I'm going to be very kind to my opponent, as I hope he will be kind to me, and uh, maybe I'll try a knockout punch, but I don't think I'll be able to do that to such an illustrious opponent. Um, so I only do two operations. I do subtotal, and I do total thyroidectomy. Those are the only two operations I do. And why, what are the logical reasons to do a total? Well, to maximize outcomes. Uh, for dysfunction, we're not going to talk about that, we're talking about cancer, to aid in the technical aspects of extirpation, to maximize outcomes for surgery, and to minimize complications. Those are the things we need to do. So what are the logical reasons not to do a total? Well, when outcomes are not affected by doing a lesser procedure, such as a subtotal thyroidectomy, or if complications are higher, even though outcomes are the same or better with a lesser procedure. So you don't want to do a total in those cases. So here's Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. Obviously, that needs a total. Let's throw that out the window for the time, be time being. The proponents for total thyroidectomy have a laundry list, which you can read as well as I can. But the principal reasons for doing a total are it allows, allows for radioactive iodine, and it, enhancing, it enhances mod monitoring for recurrence uh, with thyroglobulin. The others are listed here. In the interest of time, I won't go through them all. But the proponents of hemithyroidectomy, just to provide balance, um, give this laundry list, and clearly there are lower complications. Uh, you don't have to do this every time you have a thyroid cancer. But the most important one is there's no strong evidence to support survival or recurrence in selected cases. Now, there's a whole slew of outcome reports about total thyroidectomy, and there's a whole slew of outcome reports about less than total thyroidectomy. So the literature is quite, quite um, uh, uh, nebulous on this, and it's kind of like a bikini. Uh, you know, it only reveals what it wants to reveal. So I must add a little bit about my very good friend, Ernie Mazzaferi, who muddied the waters even more in, in, in history because he did a very flawed study of uh, an Air Force population that were all treated with various modalities of surgery. And his conclusion was, in this flawed study, that total thyroidectomy for every case of cancer, followed by radioactive iodine and, and, um, and thyroid hormone uh, provision, was the only possible way to treat thyroid cancer. And this spawned uh, uh, decades of management of thyroid cancer with overkill. So the, the folks at the ATA came out with um, uh, number 35 in the ATA guidelines, which said that for a less than four centimeter lesion, a total thyroidectomy is not necessary, a subtotal thyroidectomy is adequate, but made provision in that, the, that a total thyroidectomy could be appropriate. So they obviously had their lawyers and attorneys do part of this thing. But, you know, look, there's some cases where total thyroidectomy is not adequate. I'm sorry, subtotal thyroidectomy is not adequate for this case, for this case, for this patient who I met in the ICU for the first time with the superior vena cava syndrome due to this cancer, and for cases, and this was that 
person's operation, utilizing sternotomy, this patient. So the literature is quite, again, nebulous, but here's a great study from Memorial by Ian Nixon, and basically his, if you can read the um, numbers quickly in the, in the rectangle here, that there's no difference in this uh, well different in this low risk group in terms of outcome, which means survival and recurrence, whether you do a total or a subtotal. So why not do the lesser operation and get lesser complications? And this was borne out in even when they looked at size of lesion. But hearken back to the photos that I showed you. This is not applicable. Subtotal is not applicable to all cases. And this was uh, corroborated in this um, SEER data analysis where the, the uh, survival and recurrence rates overlap, so why not do a lesser operation? And again, using this um, uh, study of many patients where clearly a uh, subtotal thyroidectomy is better in terms of complications, the complication rate is less. No, no, you know, it's intuitive and it's also scientific shown here. The Bill Moria study did the opposite. So again, it's the bikini thing, and uh, showed that total thyroidectomy is indeed better than subtotal thyroidectomy, uh, as borne out by these figures here. And then one of the better studies was north of 61,000 patients. Uh, lead author is Julianne Sosa. Again, attesting to the fact that a subtotal is better than a total thyroidectomy. So, you know, I'm trying to give a balanced approach here, and these obviously, uh, this, these data verify that subtotal is better than total, but it didn't take into account some of those cases that I showed you before. So this is kind of uh, in, the peer, in, the in the evidence period, uh, pyramid, sorry, that uh, it's kind of a middle uh, level of evidence that's presented. And notwithstanding the fact as well, is the financial aspect of this, and then this balances it in terms of a total thyroidectomy, because clearly a total thyroidectomy is financially more viable than a less than total, because there's less follow-up visits, less uh, fine needle aspirates, and so on and so forth. So from a purely money point of view, a total thyroidectomy is a better operation. So here's the ATA guideline, and again, you know, very carefully worded, so you should do a total for less than four centimeter lesions, but gives you the leeway to do, uh, sorry, you should do a less than total for less than four centimeter lesions, but the leeway is there to do a total. So which cases at the end of the day mandate a total thyroidectomy, multifocal disease, nodularity undiagnosed in the contralateral lobe, any high-grade disease that requires post-operative RAI, such as aggressive pathology, very large lesions, presence of multiple metastases. I don't think anybody can argue with these. Clearly nodal metastases, extra thyroid extension in a major way, where it's technically impossible to remove disease without performing a total thyroidectomy. I get a lot of these cases. Or a genetic or hereditary condition that may affect the whole gland, such as in the next slide. So there's this little devil that runs around some patients that's telling the thyroid to make cancer. What are those types of patients? Um, patients who have received low-dose radiation to the neck in the past, such as dental workers, Chernobyl sur survivors, Philipp Philippine patients, patients with strong family hi history of well-differentiated thyroid cancer, patients with syndromes such as polyposis, Cowden's, Penderins, Penderids, and so on. So all this must take into account, of course, the ability of the surgeon. Not every surgeon is comfortable doing a total thyroidectomy. So those surgeons should defer those cases or do a less than total thyroidectomy if it's technically feasible. So which cases mandate a less than total thyroidectomy? The favorable case, both biologically and anatomically, and smaller unilateral uh, tumors. So this is a balance between operative morbidity and tumor biology. So at the end of the day, what do we do? For a hemithyroidectomy or less than total, a small solitary lesion, less than four centimeters, a proven well-differentiated cancer with no neck nodes and favorable pathology. And even then, as I showed you before, the, the literature is quite nebulous. And for a total, all other cases. Thank you. I now defer to my worthy opponent. <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure there's going to be any 
much of a debate. I think uh, Jeremy just gave my talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but uh, I, I want to emphasize a few things. I think Jeremy gave a wonderful review of uh, a, a lot of the data. Um, but I want to start to tell you that thyroid operation is a pretty dangerous operation. This is from the second century Chinese literature. 90% mortality in those days. Now, of course, uh, by the time we got to Coker, the mortality rate actually in near end of his career was 0.2% uh, for thyroidectomy. But even Coker knew that total thyroidectomy was not good for you. In fact, he switched from total thyroidectomy to subtotal thyroidectomy because of this. And there's a, there's a th rule called the Coker's rule. A surgeon is a doctor who can operate and who knows when not to operate. Here's a modified Coker's rule. A wise surgeon is a doctor who can do a total thyroidectomy who knows when not to. Okay. So now you already see in the recommendation 35. Here's another one about the smaller lesion. This is the one about the intermediate uh, lesion between one and four centimeters. And I think Jeremy already mentioned this uh, quite a few times. But so why, um, why do people still do total thyroidectomy for low risk cancer? This is one of the studies from Canada that actually show for microcarcinomas, almost half of the people got lobectomy and the other half got total thyroidectomy. And that's a pretty aggressive operation. And in fact, this is all in the background of all of us knowing the Kuma Hospital data about the slow progression of these microcarcinomas. Now, here's a, another interesting paper. Uh, this is paper uh, uh, from um, uh, Wisconsin. And where they show that the 19 patients with papillary microcarcinoma who preoperatively was diagnosed. So this is not like an incidentally discovered tumor. And all of the patients followed the surgeon's recommendation. And I think Ashok's talk was quite good because really the surgeon is the one that really make the decision because most of the time the patient just do what the surgeons tell them to do. In this series, all except for one patient underwent total thyroidectomy because the surgeon thought that that's the right thing to do. And the only patient that got a subtotal was because the patient had gastric bypass and they were worrying about hypoparathyroidism. But wait a second, we all should be worrying about hypoparathyroidism, not just the one that had gastric bypass. And so here is a list of the reason that they gave for why surgeon recommended total thyroidectomy. Patients and disease factors. Now, this is an obviously good thing to do. You know, uh, Jeremy told you about if you have a strong genetic problems, uh, total thyroidectomy is probably a good idea. If you have very aggressive disease, total thyroidectomy is a good idea. But the other three, uh, total thyroidectomy, the standard of treatment, well, it really isn't anymore. Uh, in fact, if you follow the guidelines, you don't have to do total thyroidectomy for many of the cancers that we see. Ease of follow-up. This is another one that's uh, uh, debatable, and I think uh, Dr. Tuttle will be on my side about whether or not it's easier to follow somebody with a subtotal versus a total thyroidectomy, because I'm not quite sure there's that big a difference. You're going to have to follow those group of patients regardless. And referring a provider's preference, that's really related to uh, how one think about what you should be doing uh, for these patients and we can educate the referring physicians. Now, this is, a, this is a problem, though. So in this group of patients that they did a total thyroidectomy on, they have some complications. And some of the complications are obviously could have been prevented, and in this case was a 5% chance of permanent hypoparathyroidism. So you don't have to have gastric bypass to have a bad case of hypoparathyroidism. We know hypoparathyroidism increases your mortality rate by about twofold uh, when you have that. So let's go through these arguments for total thyroidectomy. And I already told you that the first argument is probably reasonable, depending on the patient and the disease factors specifically. But the other ones are not. But I want to concentrate on the last one that's there is that there is a sense that we should do total thyroidectomy to avoid reoperation. And one reason is a surgeon's 
when we think about reoperation, we say, I failed. If I had to do this again, it means I messed up the first time. But wait a second, we used to do like a diagnostic lobectomy, then if necessary, do a total thyroidectomy. If it's planned, then it's not a failure. Another argument is, what about reoperation have higher risk of complication and it's more expensive? And I want to concentrate on the rest of my time on these two arguments because there are ways to think about this quantitatively. So, risk of complication is probably higher uh, for those that are needing completion total thyroidectomy, but it's definitely lower for those needing lobectomy. Now, if you're doing a prospective randomized study, there's the principle of equipoise. So you need to balance the risk of one side versus the, the other side. Now, there's a point of equipoise when the higher complication rate of reoperation is balanced by the lower rate of complication from lobectomy. Okay? So let's sort this out mathematically. So let's say your recurrent laryngeal nerve injury rate is 5%. Pretty high, but Greg says, no, it could be higher than that. Okay? <laughs> So total thyroidectomy, two nerves, 100 nerve injury. Lobectomy, one side, 50 nerve injury. Okay, if half of the patient require reoperation and your rate is 5% there, 25, your rate is 10%, now you have 50. 50 plus 50 is 100. So your reoperation complication rate, you can tolerate the complication rate to twice as much if you're operating half the number of the patients. Now, if you go down to, you only need to reoperate on 25% of the patients, your reoperation complication rate can go up to four times as high. You say, wait, my complication rate is not 5%, my complication rate is 1%. Go through the same calculation, it's the same. So no matter what complication rate it is, the, the rate of Increased complication you can tolerate for your reoperation 